Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making a Difference. I'm your host, Cindy Ashton, here at the Daily Ad Brief, coming to you from New York City, and we're going to a magical place called Treasure Island, and we are interviewing the most organized man in America. Who is he? His name is Andrew Mellon. Hello, Andrew, and welcome to the show. Hey, Cindy. Great to be with you. It's great to be with you. So you're the most organized man in America. So tell us what, how that make. I know how this makes a difference, but how does this make a difference in other people's lives by you being the most organized man in America? Well, it just means that I'm really good at what I do. And so I'm able to help people simplify their lives and their businesses. And I've been doing it for over 26 years, worked with over a half a million people, including the Metropolitan Museum of Art, Goldman Sachs. American Express, and then, you know, stay-at-home parents. I mean, it's the gamut of humans that have too much stuff and not enough time. I'm your guy. <laughs> I love that, Andrew. Um, I'm like Miss Anti-Clutter. <laughs> my neighbors come in my house, they're like, you don't have a coffee table. I said, I know, I like space. I want to scroll, sprawl, and do my yoga. And I'm like very minimalistic. So my question for you is, in terms of making a difference with this, what has the transformations? Talk to us about one or two transformations you've seen with some of the people that you have worked with. Well, sure. I mean, again, when we're t- when we're talking about a business audience, it's typically time based with organization coming behind it. And in residential applications, it's typically clutter and stuff. And time and time management improves on the back end of it. I mean, they, they're interconnected. And so we see the impact in both directions. It's just in professional settings, it tends to be more time management that we lead with and productivity. And then by by extension, clutter is tamed in offices as well. It's I mean, it's it's remarkable to see the transformation when the light bulb goes on and people start to recognize that how they think about, feel about, and interact with either time or stuff or both is the is the magic recipe to setting themselves free. I love that. You give people freedom. I think that's fantastic. Now, I know that you are also making a difference in other ways. Tell us about a volunteer experience that you had that was really touched your heart. Oh, well, I mean, I volunteer for Meals on Wheels, and it's, I don't think anybody, certainly in the United States of America, but really, ideally, anywhere in the world should be hungry, right? I mean, food, clothing, and shelter should be taken care of for everybody. We're, there's tremendous wealth in the world. There's tremendous resources still available, even as we deal with global warming and lots of other natural challenges to our comfort and success and and, uh, survival on the planet, I don't think anybody should be hungry. So uh, making sure that people have nutritious, uh, adequate nutrition is uh, is a no-brainer and something that is very close to my heart. Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I live in New York and since the pandemic, the homelessness has gone up even more and it's just there's only, I mean, I bring money with me, but I can't give to everybody and it's hard. Of course, um, of course. You're, you are so driven for this specific cause. Is there something that, that drives you for this specific cause for Meals and Wheels? Is there a backstory to that? Well, I, I mean, it's not a big backstory. My mother has been volunteering for Meals on Wheels for the past 30 years. And so it, I was inspired by her you know, she's often older than some of the people she's delivering food to at this point. And, uh, and yet she's quite able-bodied and, and she inspires me. And, and again, like I said, I just, it's, um, I just, the idea of hunger and how primal it is to our survival seems mm. like something that should be eradicated. I am a hundred percent with you. I mean, we certainly do have enough money in the world to take care of this. And finally, one of the things that really inspires you is people that live from their values. Who is one person that lives through their values that you really go, that's a great example? Ooh, wow. Just one. Uh, you know, or, I would okay. just reference... We've got time. <laughs> <laughs> I would reference uh, several people. I mean, a mentor of mine who's no longer here, Herb White, was uh, somebody who inspired me to live by my values. Uh, a professor of mine... Um, Dr. Um, James Rapport is another person who lived by his values and inspired me. And I would say uh, a current friend, Bubba Levy, uh, down in uh, Houston, Texas, is another uh, mentor friend who inspires me the way he lives in alignment with his values. 
Andrew, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's, you are full of energy, full of passion, full of focus and clarity. Well, of course you are. You're organized. <laughs> so um, thank you for, for enlightening our audiences and being on the show today. It's my pleasure. Thank you. And um, more love, less stuff. <laughs> yes, more love, less stuff. And for those of you watching, thank you for tuning in to yet another episode of Making a Difference. If you'd like to connect with Andrew, please go to dailyadbrief.com and we will see you on another episode very soon. Simplify presents Addressable CTV. Combining the power of TV with the targeting and attribution of digital. Simplify's addressable CTV delivers massive reach with the ability to scale without sacrificing precision. TV buyers can generate incremental reach with household level targeting, frequency controls, reporting, and insights. To learn more about Simplify's addressable CTV and what it can do for your clients, visit simply.fi.